I'm Jeff Mack and I'm the landowner here, general contractor by trade. Well, I pretty much grew up here as a kid with my grandfather. He ran cows over here uh, and they spent most of the winter over here and it was always difficult to get to the cattle to take care of them. And my grandfather always said, one of these days I'm going to get a bridge across this creek so we don't have to do this, you know. And the property was pretty much inaccessible until the water went down in the spring. A neighbor uh, told me about NRCS and I got involved with them trying to do an irrigation project. Uh, we were exploring other options and possibly get, keeping cattle out of the creek with a bridge. So that's how it kind of came to be. Now here it is. Uh, my name is John Tiedemann. Uh, I'm a civil and agricultural engineer with NRCS. We looked at uh, a similar project in, the, in that case uh, used a prefab steel bridge, heavy steel girders and sections. And so we priced that out and more, from more than one vendor and hands down the rail car, repurposed rail car, was the most cost effective. And, and you know, I've been involved with a cast in place concrete bridge, not this span length, but uh, all of that, it's the materials and, and labor uh, cost for installation. So it turned out that the rail car was uh, the best alternative and, and saved us a lot of money. And, and then as well as the abutment, the support system. Part of the economics there, because those heavy wire baskets are filled with cobble-sized rock, was the fact that there happens to be a quarry, a gravel quarry that's only six miles from here, all of that plays into the economics of, find, of choosing uh, uh, the best alternative based on performance, first and foremost, but also economics. It did cost quite a bit of money, and I think that the NRCS wound up paying for probably in the neighborhood of half of it. And without that, I don't know that we ever could have got it done. Think your uh, grandpa would be happy to see it? I think he would.